Hey yo. Yeah. Nike check. In its second season of existence, there's a look inside one of the real jewels of the NFL, SoFi Stadium, just south of downtown Los Angeles. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Chargers. Two one and one teams here, each looking to move over 500, and we're underway here in week three. the 21 yard line so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision loses them about four yards at their own 21 yard line They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive They'll run for the first time with Austin Eckler. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. That's complete to Austin Eckler, the running back. They work this well upfield across the 45. Chargers. A pickup of 24, and that's where the play began, the 24-yard line. Running on first down, Eckler. Taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Chargers first down. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 41. Here is Eckler. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Eckler, the ball carrier. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. Trying to force it to Allen, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mac Wilson, and they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Now, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting negative or otherwise and turn it into positives moving forward and he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. he would call it a gain of four on first and that'll make it second down four yards on the pickup second and six at the 26 yard line They give the chub out of the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. 
Jerry chalked that up as a four-yard loss. And now it's third down. Two-yard line. Escaping the pressure right. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep over the middle. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 34, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Chargers take over. So CD, his very first pass of the afternoon, intercepted. I know that's a major surprise for any quarterback because, look, let's face it, no one thinks about throwing interceptions. But think about all the warm-up that we saw, right? Every pass he threw wasn't a single interception because, oh, that's right, there were no defenders out there. A little bit different when there's live guys out there chasing the football. After the turnover, here's Herbert taking a shot for Samuel. Brings up second down. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Here's second and ten now from the 35. <laughs> Throwing again. Herbert. Pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Credit that sack to Dante Fowler, Jr. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game, watching this offensive line, because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit. Right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. On the screen, this is Eckler. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Browns will take over first and ten. The Browns drive about to get started. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you. A huge thank you. You said you made the points. Started the drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves. Maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. A big play on the catch and run covering 34 yards. First down, Browns. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They'll run for the first time with Kareem Hunt. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. and 10 Mayfield they'll go screen here to Hunt the first down screen pass good for five all defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people but they were right there waiting and they stopped him for a minimal gain Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The tackle, they'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Gain on the play. 
and it's third down. Mayfield down. how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This taken in about four yards deep. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. 25-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. That's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. It's third down and six. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. It's taken to the 26. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Three Chargers nothing. The Browns drive about to get started. They've shown very little offensively to this point. Well, neither team has really. And they come up here now first down. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end, in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Throwing Mayfield. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Dylan James with a pick. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Austin Eckler. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he fires one, it's intercepted. Picked up by Mac Wilson. a week ago, now two here in the first half. Yeah, we call it ball hawking, and the only way to truly be good ball hawk 
science. It's not guessing. It's not just simply anticipation. It's study and understanding what they like to do and beating them to the spot and creating big plays. Well, they're watching the film, and it's working. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. They'll give it to Chubb. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. No gain on the play. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb. Able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Short of the goal line. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think the second down is a time you go play. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Nick Chubb. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. Able to punch it in on third down. Makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. Taken in the end zone. And no return here for Reed. This will be a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Charger drive about to get going. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there. Wow, total good effect. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. for 13 and a charger first. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Play action. It's Herbert. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that second down. I have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. to throw again. Herbert. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. Well, enough to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Oh, man open. It's Tyler Higby. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. It's fourth down. 
The field goal unit's going to stay put on the sideline. They're going to go on fourth down here. They snap it to Herbert. On Herbert, his third interception. Brady Williams picks it off. Waving through traffic, and now he's free. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Browns' defense has a touchdown. The mistakes continuing to pile up, and it looked like they were going to be able to eat into that deficit. Instead, now the deficit is even larger. Yeah, they were on a march with a chance to get back within a score, but now that deficit continues to grow. Cybert on for the PAT. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. 16. Chargers nothing. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this carries into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Over first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they Field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, I didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. From the 22, here's second and eight. Herbert will give this one up. And the flag down as he gets only about a yard. And let's listen in on the call. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. On second down, Eckler. And just not a ton of room to work with. He'll get it to the 15 for a gain of two. He's brought down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Chargers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and 15 from the shotgun. Here's Herbert. Tay Fowler able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. They'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jack and Coach will get larger than life. You're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. The Browns drive about to get started. They go play action here on first down. Gonna let one fly for Robinson. Six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it. Could not hold on through the end of the play. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. And a little floater there. Incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? 
So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Oh, fires this one downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That goes as a gain of 36 on third down. First down, Cleveland. Second down. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. to throw Mayfield and Mayfield again with the interception his third Derwin James with a pick and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half Mayfield but that's the kind of interception that can save a game right there they're already down two scores huge play slowing down what was going against them I was thinking the same thing you get down three scores there at this stage could be in for a long ball game The Charger drive about to get going. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're going to pull for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. At the 21-yard line. From the 21, it's second and 10. <laughs> Throwing again. Herbert. and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. The final shot before the break for Herbert. He's going to look for Allen now on the deep ball. half of action so we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far as we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report coach Mike Badgley to kick off for the Chargers the Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. At their own 27-yard line. drive about to get started and three interceptions in this game and I would have to think I wasn't a quarterback but number four is kind of oh you're like oh man I can't throw four 
No, what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? Major Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Good position to be in here, second and inches. Chubb. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Have. He was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Here's Beckham now. It's a jet sweep. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Well, that's a wide out. When you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. <laughs> Mayfield from the gun on third down. He finds Beckham complete. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Now Mayfield. They set up the screen to Chubb. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. <laughs> Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Kareem Hunt, the ball carrier. That's a really nice job He's by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Shot here for Hooper downfield. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Kaiser Wright. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. 
And they'll start out here with a jet sweep. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. The tackle made there by Miles Garrett. One yard. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and nine. Justin Herbert looking to pass. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Well, coming into this one, we expected that this offense would have trouble with this defense, and that's exactly the way that this game has gone. Pressure in his face. Coverage downfield has been tight. That led to another incompletion. This defense, they're exactly who we thought they were coming into this one. And he is not going to get to the marker as they stop him short at the 14. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. And this kick will be touched down as they spot it inside the 45-yard line. At their own 44-yard line. The Browns' drive about to get started. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, I think it matters as part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. At the 46-yard line. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Now Chubb. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Four yards the pick up, first down. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. To Nick Chubb. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And he's going to get to the 31 and not for the first down. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On the ground, it's Chubb. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. On the carry. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play.
Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Odell Beckham, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add six to their lead. I think it's easy to say mission accomplished on that drive. The goal was to increase the lead. They did exactly that. Extra point by Seibert up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 23. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. 25-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Once more, here's Eckler. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. He's tackled at the 34-yard line. Oh, this offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back now at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. The Chargers on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. They're up against a third and one situation. Herbert off of play action. He'll buy some time right. Looking long for Westbrook. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. And Allen's got it. And he'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. So no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. At the 44-yard line. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. So that one a disaster. A big loss there with second down coming up. Herbert throwing again. That one complete to D.D. Westbrook. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That's a gain of six. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Chargers on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and 11. Herbert back to the air. Open man, it's Allen. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 44-yard line. Herbert with a connection to Allen for a Charger first down. 44-yard line. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. To the air again, Herbert. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. That'll bring up second down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. 
They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Miles Garrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Yeah, it looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From the 50, here's Herbert. This one complete to Chris Samuel. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. Here we go on fourth. Herbert. And this Browns defense stands tall. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. The Browns drive about to get started. An opportunity for them to salt this game away after that fourth down stop we just witnessed as they hold a commanding three-score lead in the fourth quarter. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. made by Joe. Give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. It's now second and six at the 44-yard line. And again, it's Chubb. Oh, Chubb fumbled it. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. The tight end, the ball. Wow, that ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. He's across a third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. It's a gain of three. And the Browns first down. They run. Chubb. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Well, first down there on a pickup of 25. First down, Cleveland. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt, and he'll wind up picking up about four as that is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Joey Bosa in on the stop. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Take a knee. He kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself.